Welcome to episode number 10, the big 10, ten episodes. 10 episodes of the Ultra RC Hobby Show. Uh, tonight we're going to cover the final review on the UDR, what we, and well, I guess Chris and I, I would say final it. review, or review of it so far. Okay, yeah, well, let's go with review of it. We're so still going to talk about it more. You think? I think so. Okay, well, maybe, maybe we'll talk about it more. Um, so we're going to cover that tonight. We're also going to show you guys how to rebuild some shocks. Shocking. Uh, we get a lot of questions about, really? Yeah. You had to. Shocking. Uh, yeah, I see what it is. Uh, we get a lot of questions about those. Uh, you know how to fill them, what you're looking for when you're rebuilding them for O-rings, uh, and how you want to go about doing that. So we're also going to talk about that. And then we're also going to have something cool. What are we doing tonight, Chris, for episode 10? Are we doing something crazy? Oh, we might be giving something away this week. Ooh, giveaway time. So stay tuned to the end of the video. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But yeah, welcome to episode number 10. Yeah, I don't know, it's a really good track. So the Traxxas UDR, um, it drives really nice. It handles well, the shocks are set up nice, it's been really smooth. We've been able to huck it around really well. I don't think we've broken much. No, just a no. servo. Yeah. That's uh, honestly my biggest complaint. Just the servo right now has been kind of the downer, but it is a 2075, it's nothing too crazy. So now that we put that uh, beefy 7955. We've probably driven what 12, 14 yeah, packs through it, around there. and it's been an awesome truck. We've got it dirty, we've got it full of snow, we've got it muddy, we've got it pretty much everything. And there, there's only been a couple of complaints I've had on it. Um, so the servo definitely being one. Uh, we also took out a bearing in the rear planetary section. Uh, it was the 8x12x3.5, which is the exact same bearing they use on the inner uh, wheel hub of a mini Revo. So uh, it's kind of a small little bearing, but when we were taking the rear diff apart, water was still coming out of it. So that probably definitely had a really big factor into why that bearing went. Um, the cool thing, I guess, we didn't talk about the first video we did, kind of the initial unboxing, is the rear diff. Uh, it goes pinion input to a planetary gear and then to the rest of the pinion. Uh, as well as the drive or center transmission has a center diff that has a slip yoke. Uh, so it's more like a full size transmission. Uh, so the drive shaft itself is a solid metal piece. It doesn't telescope anywhere except in that slip joint into the center differential. Uh, and then it goes to another planetary. So Traxxas is really working on, you know, not breaking drivetrain components uh, so you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I guess the only other complaint I have on the UDR is there still is not too many tires out yet. Yeah, that's um, a big thing with these. Yeah. They did just release a paddle tire, which is awesome, I guess, if you're in more sandy conditions yeah. where we would want to go take it outside, go have fun in the concrete, go have fun on the track, so in dirt, um, not really much sand. Um, but other than that... I'd like to see them put a bigger sway bar in the back or a bigger option for a sway bar. Yeah. Just because the stock one is pretty thin, so the truck is allowed to lean quite a bit. Trax has just released the full set of springs for this. Did they? Yeah, oh, some new yeah. springs. So three Still options on bars. springs. Um, and they also just released a brand new aluminum panel set for the Ooh, interior cage. Nice. So you can get that blue, silver, red. Uh, and then if you picked up the silver version, you could almost use like a clear paint and make them an anodized color if green or mm. if red or blue wasn't your color, if you want to match it more to like a, a candy orange, or if you have the rigid edition, the red might work really good, or you could do like a gunmetal, something really different, but they did just release all those aluminum panels as well. Um, we just got clear bodies in stock here at Ultra as well uh, for the UDR, so if you have one, not really digging the stock body it came with, we do have clear ones on the wall here as well. So that's kind of a cool thing coming for the UDR. Um, once we start doing some upgrades, uh, we will definitely be posting some more videos once it's all bling blinged out. Uh, but other than that, do you have any other things that were kind of a pro or a con to the UDR? Not really. I've been, I'm excited to drive the truck more and learn the way to drive more. I'm excited to get it out onto different I conditions. Jumps. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for the track. Yeah. Maybe episode 11 or 12, we'll have it out at the track having some fun. So stay tuned for that. I know lots of people have been asking me anyway how well they jump and so far it's a lot more balanced than a Yeti. It doesn't want to nosedive as much as the Yeti. Uh, it definitely has the weight uh, a lot more center and neutralized in the car. Um, so with the extra two tires in the back too there is a lot of weight hanging back there. Um, but other than that, that is kind of like our 
mid to early final review, I guess, of the UDR. Yeah. Okay, so tonight we're gonna re uh, reoil uh, one of these Techno shocks. This is on the front of an ET48.3 e truggy. Um, so let's jump right into it. So kind of the tools you will need are tools we've actually previously talked about. Um, so the 17 millimeter Techno wrench, and this is kind of proprietary to Techno uh, for this tool anyway. Uh, but this guy, this we talked about on episode number one. So if you missed it on episode number one, go look at it. It's an awesome tool. Uh, but this is the Techno ball ink shock shaft plier. Uh, and the cool thing with the Techno trucks is they actually have the bottom of the shock is 17 millimeters uh, and the cool thing is you can use their 17 millimeter um, uh, wheel wrench sorry yeah, I couldn't go. even couldn't even English there wheel wrench as an actual shock cap this way and you can undo the shock cap because it is uh, gonna be 17 mil up there or you can actually use the flat spot uh, and put this over it like that and you can twist off the cap so you're not uh, using pliers, you're not scoring up this shaft. So two really cool tools uh, if you have a techno truck. Now, unthread the body, make sure we don't lose the bladder, and dump out all the old oil. We like using just an old container or the garbage, it really doesn't matter. And you wanna fluctuate that up and down a couple times just to get all of the oil out. Um, this shock was rebuilt relatively recently. We built this before we went out to Chilliwack. Um, so it doesn't have a whole bunch of runtime on it. Uh, the only downside is we went really, really soft because we were at an indoor track uh, and now we're switching back to outdoor with some a little bit more heat. Uh, so we will have to change the shock oil. So now again, we use a Techno shock shaft tool, grab the shaft and twist off this rod end. So again, really, really handy tool. boot off and push the piston through. So for these guys, I always like to uh, redo the bottom O-rings and the cartridge set just to make sure that everything's lubed up. Uh, we didn't suck a rock or, or something really minor and rip one of those O-rings. Uh, I always like to make sure the shafts aren't scored as well. So to get the cartridge out, again, Techno tool, uh, it's a 12 millimeter bottom cartridge set uh, and you can just twist that right off. that. So now that we have the bottom cartridge holder out and the shaft guide, um, I always like to pop the shaft guide out. There will be a little black uh, insert in there um, that the shock shaft will ride in. And the biggest thing with those is you want to just make sure and visually inspect that it isn't ovaled out. Um, otherwise the shock shaft will be able to go like this uh, as it's traveling up and down through the shock body. And then it's going to leak. That is correct, it will leak like a sieve. So the next thing we gotta do after we have this bottom cap off is just pop the O-rings out. I usually just like using a two mil driver and pop the O-ring. There will be a spacer in the Techno shock as well between the two O-rings. Uh, and there's also gonna be another shaft guide in the body. Pop that guy out. So again, the same thing goes for these three plastic bits as well, is you just wanna make sure they're not ovaled out uh, these ones we did just put in here. Uh, Techno does also offer a uh, Delrin set, so a little bit less stiction with the Delrin, uh, and usually it lasts a little bit longer as well. Uh, most companies are kind of switching their uh, plastics to Delrin now instead of just hard plastic as it lasts a little bit longer. So what I also like to use is the Losi shock oil or shock O-ring grease. Um, people get mad at me because I use Losi stuff, um, but I'm not too worried about it. It's a, it's a good product, uh, and what you want to do is when you put that guide back in the shock body, uh, I like just putting a nice little coating on the inside there, just a quick little wrap around, throw the O-ring in there, and I just use the tip of the grease to push it back in, and I like to go and put another just a quick coating on the top as well, and then we can make sure this uh, spacer is clean. There's no extra stuff on there. Push the spacer down and again the same thing just a quick little coating of the grease all the way around 
next to the ring. Is there anything, any, anything is too much grease in there? You can go a little bit too yeah. much and you'll see it floating in the shop the oil. Yeah. Yeah, so that's when you know it's not going to be harmful by any means mm -hmm. um, to have a little bit too much. Um, but the one thing with putting a little bit too much on there is there's going to be some extra in the o-ring. So when you push the shock shaft through, it's going to come, right it's going to come out. Yep. So that's the big advantage. And again, just a nice light coating on the top before you put this cartridge bottom on. And just as an extra precaution, I always put on the bottom o-ring here as well. Um, you don't need much. And this is just to make sure if any oil did get past the threads, it's not going to come down the bottom. So like I said, not very much but just as kind of an extra little precaution. So now we can put this back on. I do not thread these on all the way though. I'll do it so it's just almost touching that uh, bottom O-ring. And then what we'll do here is we'll put a little bit of grease on the shaft, just on the threads, just so when it meets the first O-ring, uh, it's not gonna rip or tear it. So we'll just throw this shock shaft back in here. All it takes is one little cut or scratch on that O-ring and it'll start to yeah. leak again. And then, like I said, you get all this extra grease on the top that was extra. So just give the shock shaft a quick wipe. Now you can actually go and start tightening this cartridge set by hand. And just make sure you keep kind of fluctuating the piston a little bit. You don't want to tighten these too much where you have stiction. So you want the shock shaft to move in here pretty easily. Um, if you tighten this down and the shock shaft's really hard to push in, uh, loosen it off a little bit. Uh, it's going to give you a really uneven shock. Um, so yeah, still right there, we're tightened down uh, and we're still nice and free. So next step, throw the boot back on. If you don't throw the boot on and put the rod end on, you're kind of hooping yourself because now the problem is the boot will rip and tear trying to go over the rod end. So I always like getting these started by hand. Now what kind of oil are you running in here? This one will be going to a 45 weight. 45 weight? Associated oil, yeah. Thread this back on. And the one thing with the rod ends too, to check uh, on your setup station, if you do take them off, you will want to check the droop again on your setup station, um, just to make sure that the shock has the right amount of droop. So that's it. I just got to move it along. Just need some so we have the, the shock here in our handy dandy Ultra RC car stands. Uh, we sell these in store for 25 bucks. Uh, there'll be a two-wheel stand, car stand, eight-scale or ten-scale uh, rebuild for your shock mm -hmm. stand as well. So kind of cool. Okay, so when it comes to oiling these shocks, um, I usually only fill my shock, say about halfway, the first time. And the reason I do that is when you fluctuate the piston up and down, usually you'll have a whole bunch of air sitting underneath the piston. Um, so the biggest thing is it's going to be a little less time for all of the air to come out. And you can always just give it a little flick. It's never a bad idea to let the air uh, come out of it for you know about five minutes or so. So this one's gonna be kind of rushed because we don't want to cut and then blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Well, I don't think they will. Oh. We can only make small talk for so long. <laughs> so it looks like we got most of the air out. Uh, and then what we want to do is fill the shock up. So now this is the crucial part. You don't want to have too much oil in here um, because you can hydro lock the actual shock shaft. So the shock shaft isn't going to want to go through the body smoothly. It'll be like you're trying to compress concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be like a big spring inside there and that's it. So that's not what we want. But we also don't want to put too little oil in there because if you put too little oil, get aeration. Yeah, you'll get aeration. And these shocks are not an aeration shock. They are a bladder shock. Um, so that ain't going to work. So just make sure you put the right amount of oil. So uh, I'll show you too much. So too much would be coming right out of the top and we have this nice dome there, that shock oil, that's too much. Don't, don't, don't try that, it ain't gonna work. So the nice thing is with these bottles, you can squeeze them again and actually suck some oil out. So usually, nice. kind of how I guide this is, is kind of look at your two millimeter driver and be like, okay, well that's about the right amount of distance off the top of the cap. So with the Techno Shock, there is gonna be bladder in there, just make sure it's fully level and seated properly, and just slowly start to twist this shock cap on. So the big thing also with these is you can change the amount of rebound you get um, by having the shock shaft fully extended or in. Uh, this one we're gonna do with some rebound. 
So a little bit of oil came out the bleeder hole, which is what we want to see. And again, use your techno tool, 17 mil on the bottom. Give it a quick little lockdown. I know this is the moment of truth. Does it go up and down smoothly? Oh yeah. Oh, like shocking. <laughs> like a glove. So there you go. There's kind of our tech tips on doing shocks. Uh, we might do a Traxxas video one too. They're honestly really, really similar. Um, this was just like the first shock I had on my bench um, from rebuilding one of our racers' trucks that we took out to Chillac and getting it ready for this summer. Um, on the next couple episodes, I'll be building an SCT 410 that also kind of uses the same uh, principles, minus it has an aeration cap uh, instead of uh, a bladder style cap. So you can kind of talk about the differences of that later on. But I think that's it. Is there anything I missed? Uh, as no, an I think you did a really good job on that. That's I the know. first time I've ever seen him rebuild that chalk, and I have to do a set myself. So that was really interesting. Because yeah, you just picked up an SCT yeah, or SCT 410. Yeah, SCT 410. Yeah. So. There you go. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> but now you have to do the ending, so. Ah, I'm bored. Let's give some away. We're already? Yeah, it's time. Oh, okay. episodes. So I guess you made it to the end of the video, and now you want to know what we're giving away and how you can enter. So we're going to be giving away a $40 gift card uh, to Ultra SC Hobbies here in Saskatoon. 40 bucks, you can buy lots of parts, you can put that towards a kit, maybe you can put that towards a new car stand, who knows? But we're giving 40 bucks away, so how you can enter What do is... I do? How do I win? Okay, well if you'd let well, me tell get me, to let that me know. point. Let so... them know. <laughs> so what, Come on. what you need to do is you need to like the video, and you also need to comment. And what we're gonna be looking for in the comments is what's your favorite episode, and what you enjoy about the show. So you have to comment that. You can't just say, hey, I want to win 40 bucks. That's just not going to work. It's not going to help. Nope. No, it's not going to work this time. So you got to, like I said, like the episode. You have to comment on what your favorite episode was and what you enjoy, like segment wise, in the show. Okay, you got that? Yeah. Was it clear enough? Yeah, when, when's the draw? The draw is going to be. Now you put me on the spot. <laughs> What's a good date? Two weeks from two yeah, weeks from Friday. Two weeks from Friday. Okay, Would so Friday this episode airs is gonna be the fourth. Yeah. So if we do the draw on the 18th, yeah, on episode number 10, 11, on episode 12, episode 12 we'll be giving away that forty dollar gift card. So that is the 18th of May. Like and comment. Yeah, like like the video. Yeah, like the video. And comment on it. What's your favorite part in the episodes, and what's your favorite episode? Just make sure. But yeah. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on Ultra RC Hobbies Facebook and YouTube. I think you can only subscribe on YouTube. Yeah, but, but I mean, you can like, share with all your friends. You can share on it on Facebook. Facebook. There we go. But that's episode ten. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, again, you guys can comment extra on this uh, video. Mm -hmm. What you want to see for Q and A's. You know, something that you guys would like to see on the show. Uh, we always like interacting with everybody. And uh, Chris isn't wearing his cool hat today. No, maybe this is just a generic hat. Maybe we, maybe we have to have a show on people commenting what hat we should yeah, have Chris wear. What hat episode. do I wear next episode? <laughs> but yeah, that's episode 10. Thank you guys so much for the support. Can't believe we made it to 10 episodes yeah. already. It's been a blast. Yeah, so it's been fun. Thank you again.